Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Live, the podcast. My guest today is the beautiful and talented actress and model, Priya Lundberg. She has been featured on the covers of Vogue, Cosmopolitan, Harper's Bazaar, L'Officiale, and Grazia. Priya was recently seen as the female lead, along with Bruce Willis and John Travolta, in the movie Paradise City. Don't go away. I'll be right back with Priya Lundberg. Welcome to the show, Priya. Hi, Gary. It's so How great are you? to see you. Yes, thank you for having me. Oh, my God. You know, you've been amazing in your career and all the things that you've done. Um, I know you were born in Thailand, but your mom is Thai and your dad is Swedish. Yes. Um, and you were actually at 13, you started, but yes. you were, was, was there an intention that, you know, when it started, you felt like, I want to do this? Or did your mom say, oh, you should act or sing? What, what, how did it, how did it start? Well, it, it's quite funny, actually. So when I was younger, I desperately wanted to be in movies, like really young, until like eight, nine years old, I, I would do plays for my family and family's dinners. I'd play Cinderella or, you know, and I'd write my own little scripts and make all my cousins perform. <laughs> and I was really hurt one time. They had a, back then it was more like, you know, they had a, is it the scout? They come to the school and like kids for commercials or, you know, shows. And my best friend was picked and I wasn't. And I was so hurt. I was like, oh my God, that's it. No more chance for me. I wasn't first choice to be an actress. So I gave up got into like all the like uh, drama school, soccer, just never thought about it again. And then one day I was at a shopping mall in Thailand and one of the uh, influencer, influential managers and a person who worked at a production company found me and said, where's your mom? So I, you know, I was like, oh, um, she's over there. And, <laughs> and they said I had to go in to do it like a studio test, like a screen test at the studio. And I, I booked my first role at 13. Wow. <laughs> I guess, yeah, when you wish for something hard enough, but then you let it go. Well, it comes. you know, it's, it's <laughs> like what we've talked about is the intention mm -hmm. and also, you know, dream vision boards or mapping boards. I think, I think when we start with an intention, even when you're at a young age, um, it, it manifests. And, and I was talking to you about Belinda Carlisle, which I have to put you in touch. I remember she said when she was a little girl, she would come home and she had a box and she would say, I'm going to be a rock star, a yeah. famous rock star mm -hmm. at like 10. Mm -hmm. But I think when you're younger, it's it's there's a magic about you're able to create. Um, so once you started working a lot in Thailand, mm -hmm. you also had something to do. Tell me about the UNICEF, how that uh, UNHCR. Right. So um, it's the UN Refugee Agency. I joined, um, I think it's 2014, 15, I think around there. I got involved because I was reading the news about the Syrian conflict, and during that period of time, there was, you know, was, there was famous photographs of uh, people being washed up on shore, and it just really affected me that. People once had a home, a culture, a language, familiarity, uh, identity, uh, careers, and their entire dreams were shattered. And they have to migrate to a foreign country and, you know, have persecution or not find, not have any remnants of home. It's really sad. So I felt like I really wanted to do my part. So I emailed UNHCR Thailand at the time at their contact us section. And I wrote them a little essay, and I was like, please let me help I, in any way, shape, or form. So I started volunteering for them, and then I got appointed to Goodwill Ambassador. And then um, last year, um, I finally resigned because I wanted to focus more on animal rights. Because I think, you know, you have a period of time, a chapter. I've given eight years to that, and right. I'd like to move on to something. Right. Animal. And I know that you are, you know, you're, you're, you've you worked in America, but your your biggest feature was uh, the one um, with John Travolta and Bruce Willis. What was that like? I know you. it, it was a, a, probably a shock that you got it. Yeah, uh, it was a shock. <laughs> but what was it like when you decided, oh, my, I'm actually going to work with these people? Oh, I was so honored. I mean, my mom is from a very small village in Thailand. Uh, it's called Ang Tong. So it's a town. Um, and I never thought, like, coming to America, I would ever work with my heroes. 
John Travolta and Bruce Willis, Stephen Dorff, Chuck Russell, the director. It's, it was a dream come true shooting in Hawaii, especially after a year of lockdown. So I was so honored, so happy. Every day felt truly magical being on that set. I was very did, lucky. did they did they tell you? I mean, you know, sometimes you have your idols, and were you nervous in front of them meeting them, or yes, was there like a? I was. <laughs> I would be. I would be lying to say I wasn't, but then I quickly, you know, shifted into like professional mode. But right. Of course, I was so excited. I mean, the first time I saw Greece, funnily enough, was a flight to the UK with my dad. Mm-hmm. I was about, I want to say nine, nine, ten years old, and my dad's like, oh. Here's, I was like, Dad, pick a film for me. And he picked Grease, put my earphones on, and there was John Travolta. And to have him like right in front of me was the most shocking, shocking. thing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so so after that, you um, have been working. I, I know you, you go back and forth to Thailand, and you do you know different covers and different uh, products. Um, what has been the most, I would say, incredible experience that you, as a takeaway, as an actress, that you say, wow, I really learned. Was it this movie or that you just did, uh, or, or the one you did with John? Um, I learned the most, honestly, when I'm around other creatives in my acting workshop with John Marklin, to mm-hmm. be honest. Mm-hmm. I think he really focuses on cathartic focus, mm-hmm. and I treat acting as a form of um, catharsis for me. So as I learn more about myself, I learn more about the character. As I learn more about the character, I learn more about myself. And to be around an environment where it's not about booking jobs or about you know, getting the next big role or getting paid a lot, when you're just surrounded by simple creativity and surrounded by creatives who are vulnerable and open, it's such a magical experience. So I said, as an actress, what I learn the most is when I'm working with John and I'm when working with my fellow actors in a safe environment in a workshop. And it's true. I mean, I'm fortunate because I've always worked in Hollywood, but I've gotten to meet so many incredible people. And I think the creative people, they have a sense of a different energy. There's a oh, vulnerability. Yes. You know, even when I spoke to the director of Belfast, uh, Sir Kenneth uh, Branow, um, we were talking about love and about Belfast, and mm-hmm. I told him I've, I've actually taught in Belfast, and I understand his point of view. Mm-hmm. But it was so interesting how we got into the meat yeah. about the characters, and he was mm-hmm. telling me about, uh, you know, life is, is about this, and him growing up as a, you know. So I think that's so refreshing, because especially for an actor, you're learning that craft of being open and vulnerable yes it's i mean it's a beautiful art form to be honest i feel so blessed when i get to do it i i think the the magic in all this is you know we're filled with belief systems and constantly being more aware and more like you know you heal as you act Mm -hmm. i really believe that and i think it's so beautiful that every year I get to explore my creativity the way I did as a child. Mm -hmm. Unrestricted, Mm -hmm. vulnerable, open, and just, you know, I I enjoy it so much, I think. And also the thing is, nothing makes me more scared than acting, actually, because I have to put myself out there for rejection or the choices I make might not be the choices someone else would appreciate. So I admit every time I do an audition or a self-tape or even performing in front of my class, I don't like performing, I'd say sharing, because you know, it's more authentic, sharing in front of my class, um, I feel like I'm diving in the deep end. Mm-hmm. And I have such a fear of that, almost to the point that sometimes I want to handicap myself and say, just don't do it, don't do <laughs> it, don't do it. But then after I do it, I'm like, wow, that was not only exhilarating, but I overcame a fear and instead of coming from a fear-based mentality i went into a love-based mentality Correct. and i just love and, it and 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 on that point i think in any profession love is really all there is oh 100% and and i know that was our catalyst connection when we first met was that vibration of the love because really most people sometimes don't know what that is or they're searching for it instead of becoming it. 
Yeah, you have to become it to find it. I really believe that. I think once I started becoming more secure with myself, loving mm. loving yourself doesn't mean like crazy, stupid love, like light candles, do bathtubs. I mean, that's a form of self-care too. I think it's just acceptance of your imperfections and embracing them. You know, seeing yourself as that younger child and speaking to her kindly and loving her rather than being very critical and judgmental. And and also accepting the good parts mm -hmm. and the bad parts of you instead of fighting against it. Yes. Because even when you're playing a role, that character might have components of you or new ones that mm -hmm. you have to bring in. So that actually creates a, a healing for you in oh, some it's way. it's so cathartic. I mean, uh, John, my acting coach, always says, um, uh, what can you gift the character and what can the character gift you through mm. this experience? So in my recent film, Savannah gifted me with courage and strength, and I gifted her with vulnerability. So nice. and at the end of it, I felt like it was you know it was a chapter, it was a, fa a phase in my life. It was real, and I learned something from it. Wow. What do you think, um, Priya? That people in general, why are they not happy? There's a lot of people who are really not happy. Why? Why um, do you think that is? Honestly, I am someone who does have a tendency to get quite sad because I'm highly sensitive, and mm -hmm. I realize I used to think oh, I'm extremely depressed. But what I realized as I got older, I'm just a highly sensitive person. Things affect me easily. I watch something on the news, I get sad. But what I feel like a lot of people have is, you know, social media is a big factor in all this. People spend so much time on their screen time absorbing. It's like, it's almost like having a bad diet. You're, you're taking in all this negativity, bad information or comparison. You're looking at someone else's life and think, I want her life, I want her body, when most of it is just smoke and mirrors, to be honest, you know? So I think finding time to be around natural things like nature walks, being in the sunlight, you know, having meaningful, vulnerable, authentic conversations in your life. I find time for mindfulness. Meditation does not have to be hours. It could be five minutes, 10 minutes, or even just breath work, centering yourself. These things help. Diet helps. Having a healthy gut helps with having, you know, a healthy mind too. It's all interconnected. But the problem is a lot of people think, I, I do believe depression is very real because I've suffered with it, but I do believe I did tackle it head on with support, with help, having engaging, meaningful conversations, helpful conversations, supporting environment, but also working on all the factors that I was speaking about. You have to constantly go back to your roots as a human being, which means cut out all the negativity. You don't have to follow the news all the time. And and what I love about you is, um, I know you're on a wellness program of exercise, because mm -hmm. I'm the same way, and really nutrition and, yeah, movement. and yeah, movement. And movement. I know, you know, uh, you do everything from hiking to boxing to mm -hmm. yoga to Pilates to you name it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, honestly, I'm a curious person and I, I, I'm the same as everyone. Who really likes to work out that much? <laughs> Sometimes it's mundane, painful, and, and I'd rather be doing something else. So I try to mix it up and, you know, and I, and I, feel, I feel great doing it because it really does help with mental health. You ask, like, why do people feel sad? I feel like, go back to your roots, move more, be in sunlight, engage in conversations without having your phone there. Correct. Eat healthier meals. Um, what has been the biggest challenge for you so far in this life? Mm, I'd say I have two large ones um, that I'm still, you know, we're all a work in progress. Mine was learning to love myself in the way that I didn't need validation from someone else. So not my validation from my partner, not validation from my country, not validation from my career, just me being secure with me. That took a really long time and I think it affected a lot of my relationships when I placed all my expectations on the other person to make me happy. That's impossible. And if you do that to your job too, that's impossible because at the end of the day, there's going to be, you know, high highs and very low lows. You're just going to have to ride it like a wave, right? And you have to find being centered, happy with yourself. And usually I realize it's not an extreme crazy joy. Sometimes it's just a simple bliss, gratitude. 
Absolutely. And yeah. gratitude is, you know, it's so funny because over these last three years, one of my lessons has been really uh, unlimited happiness for no reason. Yeah, uh, really, you, you are the happiest person, Gary. <laughs> if I could have your happiness daily, I would, I'd be over the but, moon. But people always say, is that fake? It's and I'm not. Like, I know no, you. It's not. I, I'm just happy. I, 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 yes, there's moments where I can get sad, but I know, okay, I have the feeling, but I move on to the next uh, energy because you can stay in that emotion. We're not our emotions. We have emotions. Yeah. But we've got to know that life, I think, I think for me, it's really about we're so lucky to yes. have health, to have a beautiful life. And when you acknowledge that, that shines the light for everybody around you. Oh, and and, you, and, how you, you exude and we have to just trust it and be in gratitude. And I'm always happy. I'm happy having a plate of pasta with my Italian friends or, <laughs> um, you know, going to the store yeah. <laughs> or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the, I think also what you said about practicing rituals mm -hmm. is so important because a lot of people they fall you know they start something during january and then they yes, give it up yes everyone does like you know then they get fitter and new Correct. resolutions i'm i'm not big into resolutions i think it's kind of being hard on yourself like this year i have to lose weight i have to be better ba 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 that's hard i think you know what have have start with a habit yeah. wake up every day do you know if you know online i see do 10k walks 10k steps a day mm. and I'm like 10k steps a day, probably half an earth, seven <laughs> days a week. You gotta be working, walking in circles, girl, in LA or doing hikes every day. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll do like 5,000 steps. Let's start with that, or then, or 10k twice a week. It doesn't have to be so rigid and strict because I feel like when we do that, it's hard for human willpower. We're most likely gonna give it up, just like diets. It's too hard. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. make it something habitual easy, and easy. Correct. Yeah. Um, what does the soul mean to you? Soul. Soul. Well, the essence of who you are. You know, I think we are more than our bodies. This is just a vessel at this time, but we are much more than that. If you were granted uh, one wish to go back in time and ask somebody a question. Who would that be, and what would you ask them? Wow, that's such a good question. I've never thought about that. <laughs> Anybody. They um, can be, uh, I don't know, a scientist, a, mm, a, a spiritual leader, could be an actor, anything that you would say, I want to ask you that question. Honestly, I, it wouldn't be someone um, famous. I mean, I, I never got to know my Swedish grandmother. Mm. So I think I just wanted to sit with Frau Mool for a bit and ask her about her life growing up in northern Sweden and how life was. And was she happy? Wow. You know, I think I, I would, because she's a part of me, right? We, we are we are our ancestors, our family, and I would love to have gotten to know her, but she passed away when I was so young. Have you had the chance to go back to Sweden? I have, I have. What was that like? Oh, I love it, I love it. Swedish summers are beautiful. I, am, I haven't been back in a really long time, but I'm hoping to go back this year, actually. Mm. So be really nice. And I love that picture of you with your grandmother in Thailand, Thailand and that yeah. little, you, you said that the little- The rice vi farm yes. in the village, yeah. That was just like, a wonderland somewhere else oh it's it's magnificent i mean i am so blessed to be surrounded by you know rice fields simplicity humility from a young age and i've always known that no matter where you go the rest is just smoke and mirrors gary you know i i know we always talk about manifestation and everything but same as you we manifest to find pure and true joy not just joy through materialism and everything. And Correct. I feel like going back there, my heart is at peace, and that's what it's all about. Back to sim sim simplify your life, and life will be happy. I, always I love that. that. That simplify your life, and life will be happy. Yeah. That's a tweetable moment for yeah. you. But I think also, you know, um, in life, it's really about just discovering and learning and and really being the best that you can and mm -hmm. not worry about what other people think. Oh, that's so important. As I think a lot of women are like that too. Like 
I don't know if it's just me, but we I feel constantly guilty that I'm not giving enough time to my family. I'm not giving enough time to my partner. I'm I'm afraid my coworkers won't like me. I'm afraid if I wear that I'll be judged. Like it's constant. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. You know, but for I think we have to give ourselves permission. Yes. To just let stuff go. Like ninety nine percent of the time that person is not even mad or thinking about you. I swear. Like <laughs> Cut that out of your head. Everyone's going through their own stuff. Exactly. And not thinking about you as much as you think that they are. What people think of us is none of our business. 100%. <laughs> it took me so long to learn that. Now I enjoy setting boundaries. I used to feel really bad saying no to people. I would stretch myself thin because I didn't want them to not like me. But then now I'm like, eh. It's all right. They'll live. I'll live. I'll just say I don't want to go. Well, yeah, absolutely. Because you can't be in a million places every moment and say, oh, I've got to do that. I've got to do that. And I'm very choosy of where I go now and even places I go to speak. If it's not simple, I'm not going. No, (laughs) it's like we don't have to. People constantly feel like if they're constantly working, pushing, shoving, they justify with that with like, well, if I do this, I will be successful because I put in the hours. Correct. But then you also get burnout, you know, and I think that's so important that you find balance and not push yourself and spread yourself too thin because what's the point of getting sick when you get to the top of the mountain? You know? Exactly. And if you don't have your health, you have nothing. Nothing. Health is wealth. Health and time are two of the most valuable assets we could ever have. And, you know, let's face it, at this second this is the youngest we're ever going to be, this point onwards. And if we're aware of that, every moment we should treat it with not only gratitude, but with worth. Like, I talk to, this, to you because I want to talk to you. I'm having Correct. a meaningful conversation. Correct. You know, if I go to work, I accept this job, I, I really wanted to be there. I didn't want to be anywhere else. Correct. And I feel like if, as long as we live life like that, there won't be a lot of regret because you do something wholeheartedly. Correct. You know? And I, and I think the trust factor comes in for everybody to really trust yourself mm-hmm. and really trust the universe and that whatever your spiritual practice is, um, just trust the process. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people don't trust themselves. No, it's hard. I mean, we sometimes from a young age, we might have been told by a parent you're not going to do anything good, you know, you'll never make that, that dream is too big for you, that's crazy. But I think my whole life, I've, the second I started to, to understand that a lot of what people do to you sometimes is a trauma that's been done to them. So you must forgive them on that. But you are on your journey and it's your choice to choose to trust that it will be okay. I mean, it's two ways, right? We can choose to see problems or possibilities sometimes it's best to maybe just see possibilities Mm -hmm. because then you'll find solutions to that problem and and everything's possible that's what i teach i believe you know and a lot of people shut down after a period of time and say oh that's not possible or why would that happen to me? And you have to ask yourself, why not? Why not? Exactly. But, you know, I listened to a um, podcast the other day, and it was this woman who just had to, oh, my God, I can't remember her name right now, but I mean, I'm, I'll say it, and someone who's listening will remember. She was saying that if most people won't do change because they're afraid of change because they're afraid of optimism. Optimism meaning hope, possibility. But most of the time, like – most people who've decided to make that change and go through with it most likely will be happy because they justify that in their heart. Like it's like you wanted to leave this job. You're too afraid to, you finally do it. Once you do that hurdle, you most likely will be happy because it's that nudging. You know, we always talk about the nudging feeling, the universal Mm -hmm. nudging feeling. Sometimes that's also just your gut, Mm -hmm. your subconscious, your, your more, your moral code. You know that, Oh, I want to make that change because if I do, it will be better. Most of the time, it will be better. Make that change. As you know, you guys always talk about that when I work with you. I'm like, Gary, I'm too scared to do that. Should I do it? And you're like, do it. You know, exactly. <laughs> you should do it. <laughs> exactly. Um, what? Uh, who? Who inspires you musically? 
that you love listening to? Oh my God, it goes favorite. on and on. What's your on. favorite? I mean, I listen to Etta James. She's I great. listen to Sam Cooke. I listen to Sinatra. I listen to, um, oh my God, the Doobie Brothers or Stones. The Beatles, anything mainstream too. Like I mean, <laughs> my my Spotify is all over the place. <laughs> but I just I just love it. I I love being a child, you know, playing music full blast and singing in the shower, you know, and just dancing away in the mornings. <laughs> it's kind of great. It's good. What's what's your next goal or wish that you'd like to create that you'd say this is, this is what I want to do next for Priya. I'd really like to be able to have a life-changing role. You know, a role that comes into my life, that the universe aligns with me, and it is cathartic, healing, changing for me and those who watch it. And something that I'll look back in my career and think, damn, I moved to America, I left everything in Thailand, I lose all this time with my family, elderly um, parents, my grandmother in Thailand to pursue this, and this was that role that made it all worth it in the end. So mm. that's the only thing that, honestly, I hope for. And I, it doesn't have to come today, tomorrow, I think it will come at the right time when I'm ready to do it, you know? Priya, you are an inspiration. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, so I want <laughs> I want to wish you a great year. Well, thank and you. And thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you, of course. And um, I can't wait to see the next uh, journey for you. Oh, thank the next you, Gary. Opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming oh, in. People can uh, what, read more about you on Instagram or follow you. Yeah, or honestly, I'd or rather just they just um, <laughs> pick up your books, Gary. I mean, you're, you've been such a source of um, inspiration and joy for me. So I hope that podcast listeners pick up your book and go to your seminars and, you know, find some magic in their life. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Cool. I'm Gary Quinn. Thank you for joining me on this special podcast today. Until next time, be well.